good? God is good? And all the time? See, we're all family here. This is good. Well, praise the Lord. Hey, if you have your Bibles, let's open up to uh, Psalms. Or did I say Psalms? I meant Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. And, uh, you know, um, I, 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 I didn't, <laughs> I, I'm thankful to be here um, with my very, 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 very good friend, uh, Mark and the first, uh, Pastor Boyd and First Lady Boyd, and give honor to the Eastmans. Um, I think uh, one of my uh, times I came, I was able to preach here and be a part of this great revival church. And, uh, it, and then we came back. And we were a part of this uh, missions trip. And, and really, my, my hope was to kind of expose the young people to another great church. It's one thing uh, to have friends, but it's another thing um, to see the extension of their heart and their spirit. And if that is, if that, you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about your pastors. They are just wonderful people. They are, uh, they are reverend in the, in the district. They are kingdom contributors and so it is just a privilege and an honor to be here with them and of course their kids and uh, I know we're missing Hadassah of course but it's just it's just been wonderful time and so I just want to say thank you so much for your hospitality and then I get to meet all of you and all the personalities are here and there are a lot Amen. which is good that's good all right if you have your Bibles Matthew chapter 5 verse 9 it says this blessed are the peacekeepers Please, peacemakers, I should read better. Better are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Let me say that again. Better are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. I want to talk to you for the next couple of moments, just for a little bit, on this topic. This can be you. Say it with me. This can be you. Say it. This can be you. Let's pray. Precious Father, I thank you for this glorious church, this time, this moment, Lord God, that we come together, we lift you up, we worship you, we adore you. Pray, Lord God, that you help me speak here today and help uh, our hearts to be open to, to your call and to building the kingdom. We thank you, Lord. You are so good, gracious, powerful in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, give somebody a high five, have them sit down for a moment. <clears throat> Tell them how good looking they look. Now, of course, this is the house of the Lord. So if they don't look good looking, don't say anything. Right. We're good. So I, I don't know how many of you can relate to uh, uncomfortable situations in um, peacemaking. I want you to know that my wife, who is not here, I know. Oh, that's good. Yeah, everybody else was like, so where's your wife? And I'm like, she's not. And they're like, oh, okay. All right. So, you know. But uh, she's not here today, um, but she is a speech and language therapist, all right? So she is working in special, edu special education, and she does a lot of, of great things. She, she actually is just celebrating her 18th year, just started her 18th year of speech and language therapy, and she hasn't helped me at all. <laughs> We're working on it. Um, she would say I'm a project in process. That's what she would say. But uh, she, uh, she has the ability to be in a lot of different meetings. And she's in meetings where all different caregivers come together, different teachers, um, different, um, uh, you know, therapists and, and psychologists. And they all come together. And the parents come. And it's called an IEP. And basically what happens is, and many of you are shaking your heads, you know what I'm talking about, Basically what happens, they come and they consider the amount and what's happening with the child and, and how can we better help them to, to be better, or to have more services and such like that. And so my wife, uh, she shares with me some of the dynamics. Now, of course, she's not sharing with me the details because that would be illegal for the record. Okay, so... Um, so she shares with me some of the dynamics and she tells me about how there are times when people are coming in and the only reason that they're coming in is there to try to cover up what they've done or to justify what they've done so they don't get in trouble. You know what I'm talking about? Have you ever been in kind of those meetings where it can go one way or it can go another way, right? And so um, she, she has been in many of those meetings where that has happened. And, and just recently, or at least last school year, she was in a meeting where... 
um, the grandmother was the primary caregiver and she came and uh, she is usually seen as you know she's always ripping into the therapist and and feels like they're not you know giving adequate care all this kind of stuff and um, she said that uh, she this was her meeting that she had to chair and as she was sitting there and she's uh, in the meeting. She recognized from the body language that this may be a, a tr tough one. And so she began to tell me some of the dynamics of it and everything. And she began to use her gifts as a kingdom contributor. Right? I think, I think we as Christians have a peace that we can draw from. Right? We have the peace that passes all understanding. Don't we? We have a comfort. We have, we have purpose that is generally just sitting and latent in our, in our minds and our hearts. And so she began to speak and she began to bring comfort and peace into this situation. And, uh, and, and, and immediately on the ending of this, um, she had many of the therapists that came up and said, wow. We thought that was going to go bad. That went awesome. She got all these kudos for it and everything. And I was so thankful. I was so thankful to see this happen. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I, but I have a sibling. Does anybody have siblings in their life? Yes? All right, then you know what I'm talking about right now, don't you, right? I have a sibling, and his, his, uh, one of them is a brother. And uh, we used to have fights all the time. Um, in fact, I would look for ways to antagonize him because he just existed. You know what I'm talking about, right? See, now, <laughs> preach that, come on. Here, here's what I'm saying is, is sometimes when we begin to look around in the world today, people are going crazy. I mean, watching the news lately, Oh my goodness. We, we have lives that are in upheaval and then you have the Antifa and you have the KKK and you have the, you know, all of these different groups that are trying to, trying to cause, uh, cause destruction in our country. We're at a crossroads. We are. And you know what that means? That means that it's time for the church. That's right. That's right. Yes, it does. It means that we've got to kind of show something that's been kind of going on. You know, they, they say about mobs, and, and I'm seeing all these images and or hearing all the images on the radio. <clears throat> and uh, um, and uh, I'm hearing about all of these different mobs and things that are happening. You know, there's a couple things about mobs that you need to know. One, there's this thing called, um, in a mob, there's this thing called de-individualization. De-individualization. All right, and basically what that means is it means that when I'm in a big group um, that I, I kind of lose the sense of self and so then I start taking up trash cans and throwing it through windows, right? Um, I start causing violence or throwing fire, that kind of thing. And they say that there's two factors in a mob mentality. In the mob mentality, one is that the, the, the strength of the, the largeness of the mob um, because that when they begin to act out, what happens is, is that they see it as more of an activity of the mob rather than an individual um, event that they're doing or, or, or something that they take ownership in. And then there's the other thing, and the other, the other is that, that the, the, the level of the mob uh, also has to do with the intensity of the mob. The intensity of the mob and what they're trying to accomplish and how the fervor begins to go. And so, um, and they feel like they have this anonymity that nobody knows who they are, that, that their, their identities are clouded. And so I was just thinking lately about, about really what the message is today is, is that we really, peacekeepers, are truly kingdom contributors. See, listen, our role isn't to just sit back in our chairs, right? Our, our role isn't to just do that. Our role is to be a part of bringing hope to this world. Amen. It is. It's about, it's about changing people's paradigms. It's about, it's about helping people. It's about showing the light. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. And so I'm so thankful that, that we have this opportunity to, to jump in and, and begin to make some of these things. Uh, Robert... Um, Fulgum, he said this, he shared this. These are things I learned in kindergarten, he said. He said, and, and, and these are some good ideas. Mm -hmm. All right, one, share everything. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
play fair. Don't hit people. <laughs> That's good. See? Uh, put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess. Oh, see? Watch this one. This, this is going to blow your mind. Don't take things that aren't yours. I know. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat. Yeah. All right, here's a big one. Are you ready? Flush. <laughs> Warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. Amen. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, all right, you're going to love this one. Are you ready? Now listen, I need you to just chill. Don't, don't blow up. No running. No none of the night. No body passing. No moshing. All right? Take a nap every afternoon. <laughs> yeah. When you go out into the world, watch out for traffic. Hold hands and stick together. Be aware of wonder. Remember the little seed in the styrofoam cup? The roots go down and the plant goes up and nobody really knows how or why, but we are all like that. Goldfish and hamster and white mice and even the little seed in the styrofoam cup, they all die and so do we. And then remember the Dick and Jane books. And the first word you learned, the biggest word of all, look. See, my intent isn't to placate or wash over this very valuable characteristic that Christians should employ or embody. It is to share this, I think, this deeper guide principle that, that Jesus was trying to share with his followers. And that is this, our peacemaking builds his kingdom. Good. Yes. Now listen, if, if you cut me off for the rest or if you haven't heard anything, that's the one thing you need to hear. Your peacemaking builds his kingdom. No matter the season that you're in, no matter if you're married, no matter if you're single, no matter if you're a teenager, grandparents, empty nesters, retirees, your peacemaking builds God's kingdom. We all have this opportunity to share in the building of God's kingdom through peacemaking. Now I opened up in the scripture and, and of course I'm in the Beatitudes. And um, this is known as the Sermon of the Mount. And, and Jesus is, is saying, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Now if we can just move up a couple verses, I, I need to point something out to kind of share what I'm trying to say. That before he shares the Beatitudes in chapter 4, we see something very telling. So if you uh, move to Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 with me, it says this, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. See, many times we talk about the sacrifice that he's going to make, right? The covering of our blood, his blood over our sins, the forgiveness of sins. We talk about how in John, is speckled throughout John, how he talks about bringing truth back. But I want you to know that one of the, the reasons that Jesus came was to build his kingdom. And on top of it, to build his kingdom through us. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. It is. That's what happened. This is about the kingdom. So, so something else that we probably need to know when we're beginning to talk about this Sermon on the Mount and how strong it is. He is, he is now laying out principles of the kingdom. Right? He's talking about marriage. He's talking about divorce. He's talking about sacrifice. He's talking about prayer. He's talking about fasting. Uh, he, he begins laying out over the next three chapters all of these things that we need to do as kingdom builders. Right. 
And what's interesting to me in this whole thing is that the intention was not just about behavior modification, but it was about his vision of what he saw the world could be. Right. Come on. Oh, you didn't get that one. Come on. you, you didn't get that one. All right. His, Jesus had a vision. It, it's in, uh, let me... Let me just back up for one second, okay? Let me just talk a little bit about the days of Noah. All right? The Bible says that it was so evil. It was so evil that, that God, God didn't send Jesus during that time. Have you ever thought about that? Think about it. He didn't send a savior in God form for the remission of sins at that time. Doesn't that kind of blow your mind? Don't you kind of go, now, wait a minute, God, what was up? Why was your finger on the trigger there? Why, why were you going to bring the nu nuclear option, destroy the whole world by flooding? Why were you going to do that? Why didn't you give them an opportunity? And we know the story of Noah, and we know that Noah's building this boat, and that everybody's invited to get on it. So there was a way of salvation, wasn't there? Right, there was, there was a way of salvation. <laughs> and, uh, but, but the thing is that what I, I think about is I think about why didn't Jesus come during that time if it was so evil? I think of another time, Sodom and Gomorrah. Mom. Right? Think of what is happening during Sodom and Gomorrah. It's so immoral. It's so prideful. That, I mean, horrible things are happening. And so what happens? There. there Fire and brimstone comes down. But it, was, it wasn't before God's great mercy was still trying to peek out of his, his jacket a little bit, right? 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 I mean, he was still like, uh, when he's like, hey, uh, what, what about if we did, uh, what if we did like 50 righteous people? You think you can let that go? Sure. Absolutely. Got it. Check. No problem. Will not destroy. All right. Well, now that we're talking... <laughs> counting. What about 40? Can we do 40, God? I mean, you are going to destroy the whole thing. He's like, yes. Yes, I can. I can do 40. Well, what about, what about 30, though? I mean, <laughs> this guy's a master negotiator here, isn't he? <laughs> what about 30? And God's like, done deal. Gets down to 10, right? Don't you think that maybe, maybe he's sitting there going, all right, there's got to be, a, there's got to be 10. All right, we're going to save a whole people because of 10. But it's so interesting to me what God will do in the name of mercy. All right, now some of you are still kind of feeling a little salty, right? You're feeling a little salty about this whole idea that, that uh, Noah and all the people, well, at least all the people that didn't get on the boat, that they all died. And that judgment was done. Many times we look at it as, as punishment. Oh, God is, he's all into punishment. He's not into punishment. He's into judgment. And so it, what's interesting to me though, I love it, is that in Hebrews, right? In Hebrews, um, Jesus dies on the cross. And the Bible says that he goes, while he's in the grave, he goes and preaches to the souls of Noah. See, even, even after all time, even after all time, God's great mercy was coming out. Even after time, he said, by the way, time doesn't hold me. You can't hold me. Right? That's where he at. And he says, guess what? Guess what? I'm still going to go back and preach to those souls. See, God is a merciful God. And God, here's the thing that just blows me away. Is that God believes in his church. So let that sink in for a moment. God believes in you, Marissa. God believes in you, Sarah. And James. Even James, yes. <laughs> the animal. God believes in us. I, I want you to know what I'm trying to say, what the egg I'm trying to break here is that it isn't good enough to just come and sit on a pew. And it isn't good enough to just come and worship the Lord as awesome and as great that is and as we've been talking about for this whole weekend. That's not good enough. We are, are, in, we are uh, imposed and infused with the purpose and the vision to change the world's makeup. To bring his 
kingdom. To build his kingdom. See, many times, here's another little egg that we got to break. Many times what happens in churches is we talk, and, and a lot of people think that we're talking about behavior modification. Do this, do that, right? I mean, what are some of the reasons why people don't want to come to church? Ah, I don't want other rules. It's never been about the rules. And see, so here it is. Jesus is coming in and he's now having to write everybody's perspective, isn't he? He's sitting here, he's going, all right, you, listen, you may not know this, but in the beginning was the word. And the word was with me. And the word was me. And the word was made flesh. Oh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld the glory of the begotten of the father, full of grace and truth, right? Jesus knew this and he's like, listen, you guys, Pharisees are getting it all wrong. You're making it more about the rules than what I wanted it to be about. And I'm not saying that the rules didn't hold place and and because he's the one that spoke the rules. But he says, you do not understand what I'm trying to say. Listen to me. We got to rewrite the ship here. We, we need to readjust what's going on. Yes, I gave you 613 rules for a reason. But there's a new dispensation that's coming. There's a new dispensation that's coming. There's a new dispensation that's coming. There's a new dispensation that's coming, right? He's talking about grace. He's talking about faith. He's talking about hope. He's talking about love. Woo! <laughs> That's what we're talking about here. So here's what was happening. Now everybody chill out a little bit. Right? Okay, kill, kill it. Just, just stop for a second. Let's, let's, we're teaching, right? This is te- All right, so check this out now. So what was happening back in that day is that it was kind of a, um, kind of like the mid- medieval times, right? It was kind of like a priest and a king, all right? They might be called Caesar, or they may, you know, right? But uh, it might be the Sanhedrin court, or it might be the Pharisees, or whatever. But it was basically uh, political and then, um, and then um, religious. And so what was happening is they kind of had this group of guys, and they all got together, and they're like the head clergy, the head priests, and and then you had all these little rabbis that were kind of running around, right? Itinerant um, preachers running around. And, and then what they would have is they would have, I got to get my breath. What, what in the world? All right. And they would, have, <laughs> you guys get me all excited, chill. Um, they would have all these people that would follow them, right? And so they were called rabbis or teachers. So, so here he is, is Jesus is walking around and, and he's a rabbi and people are following him. He's, he's over the age of 30 because nobody could really be that. Oh, good, thank you. I got one up there, but I appreciate you. you're awesome. I love you. Um, and uh, so he has all of these people that are following him around. And so here he's sitting and he's like, all right, listen, we've got to change some things. Let me bestow a little truth. Let me, let me kind of focus your perspective. Let me kind of focus where you're at. Now, isn't that kind of where we are every single time we come to church, right? When, when the pastor preaches, when they begin to speak, what they're doing is they're hearing from God and God is saying, listen, I need you to speak to my people and I need you to help them to see my truth more clearly. But the bottom line in it all is that there is a responsibility that he's asking us to be a part of and that's building his kingdom. Right? I mean, that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with something so important. And so many times people look at the, the, the Sermon on the Mount and they're like, oh, that was good preaching, good job. But they don't get what he was really trying to say. He's saying, listen, I need you to help me. I need you to try and help me so that we can bring my kingdom here. And the best place for it to grow is from the inside out. Amen. This can be you. This can be you. And when I begin to look around and I begin to look at this world, I, I, am, I almost get, I'm moved with tears to see how bad. There's, there, there are times that I'm praying, God, I'm so sorry we're such idiots. Did I say that in church? Is that a, I didn't say that out loud. Uh, P 
people in need, right? I'm sorry, Lord, that we are such people in need and that we're blinded by our own pride. We're blinded by this whole idea of what our rights are or should be. Listen, this world is messed up right now and it needs the church. Hear me. It needs some kingdom builders. It needs some people that can begin to speak truth and peace and comfort and and wisdom into these structures that we've created. So I was reading the commentary on this and it was talking about uh, this portion in Matthew chapter 5. And he said with Jesus announcement that the kingdom was near... Um, in, in chapter 4 verse 17 repent for the kingdom is at hand that's the, the, the start of all of this it says people were naturally asking how do I qualify to be in God's kingdom see that was the, that was the natural question now we, we know how to do that don't we John chapter 3 Right? And I'm not talking about John chapter 3, 16, which is after John chapter 3, 3 through 5, by the way. Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah? I mean, I love the scripture. Don't get me wrong. It is through Jesus Christ that we can only be saved. It is by faith, through grace, that we can be saved. But the Bible says in order to enter in the kingdom, oh, in order to enter in the kingdom of God, you must be born again. What are you talking about? Are you saying that I need to, and I'm not going to go there because we've got children here, right? But What's the next part? You must be born of water and of spirit in order to enter the kingdom of God. I think that if I was coming to God, there'd be two questions. One, who is God, right? right. Well, he's Jesus Christ, right? Amen. God incarnate, right? Yeah. Second thing I'd ask, how do I get into the kingdom? Well, we know that. We know that that's through baptism. We know that that's through the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. See, because I'm telling you what, that which is carnal cannot have that which is spiritual. Oh, you're not hearing me. That which is carnal, that which is, that is, is temporal, that is this stuff, cannot have spiritual. We must be of spiritual heritage in order to do that. Amen. Amen. All right, that's good. All right, so I'm still here. Um, Jesus said that God's kingdom is organized differently than world kingdoms. Isn't that right? In the kingdom of heaven, wealth, power, and authority are unimportant. Think about it. I'm talking about structures of control, right? That's what I'm talking about. Wealth, power, and authority are unimportant. Kingdom people seek different blessings and benefits and they have different attitudes. Right? Listen, I am different than somebody who is in the world not following Jesus Christ. And I should be. Right? So... The attitudes are not a carbon copy. The attitudes in the church are not supposed to be a carbon copy of what's out in the world. Can I get an amen? Amen. Let me give you an idea. The carbon copy, we are not to be a carbon copy of the world's selfishness, of the world's pride, of the world's lust for power. Let me say that again. As a kingdom contributor, I am not supposed to be uh, about the world's selfishness, about pride, and about the lust of power. I'm supposed to follow Jesus in humility and self-sacrifice like Jesus. What did Jesus say? He says, the greatest among you will be the, the least. The first shall be the last. See, it's a whole different mindset and a concept. And what I'm trying to share tonight, today, is that we're not in, uh, we're not in Canido. You know, this isn't our club. This isn't our community center that we just kind of get together. We are a part of the ecclesia. We are part of the church. And the church is the arm of God to build and, and help grow the kingdom. Yes, absolutely. So I thought we should know Christ's intention for us in building the kingdom. Can I just go off on a little little tangent? It would be small, I promise, very, very short. 
it is this. You know, sometimes we talk about the church as a family. We are children, sons, and daughters of God. Amen. Got it. No problem. But many times we put all the focus on being the family of God. Now, just hear me for a while before you throw me out. And he's going to correct me after I'm gone anyway. Don't worry about it. All right? So, here it is. Many times we're like, hey, brother. Hey, sister. Right? That is to re-underscore who we are to each other. I love it. No problem. Got it. Perfect. But many times that takes uh, presence. That takes the, the primary focus. But the primary focus isn't that. Because a family, families, make a kingdom. Right? Many times we forget that. Let me illustrate. This is the controversial part. If you don't want to hear it, just kind of go like this and go la la la. la. Alright, you ready? Here it is. Many times we look at other churches. Hmm. Am I okay? We look at other churches like other businesses that compete with each other. Seriously. We do. We, we look at other churches as, as, and we make the mistake, as different kingdoms. Now listen, I'm all about measure of truth and all that. I'm not... I'm not watering that down. I'm not watering down the reason why we're in church, right? Or this church or this family. I get that. No problem. But let me tell you something. Let me just burst some bubbles here. Jesus loves me as much as he loves any other member of society. And I just got to tell you this. Jesus is not Pentecostal. Hear me. Let me be, I'm trying, hear me, okay? I, I don't mean this is in the sacrilege. I'm not meaning bad. I'm not demeaning our heritage. You get me, please. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. But many times we kind of put Jesus in this box. Jesus is looking for everyone to come to the full knowledge and understanding of truth. That's what he was saying in the Sermon on the Mount. He was talking to everybody. He didn't say, this is just my, my disciples here. By the way, it wasn't. I mean, it happened to be the people that showed up, right? But that was not what he was saying. He's saying, listen, <laughs> let's, let's get everybody on board. Now I want to tell you something. Um, we, we, I've had some like phenomenal things happen, and I want to share them with you. They're so exciting, and it is God. Now, we just uh, launched and started a church well, took over another church um, six years ago. Actually, six years today or tomorrow. Six years tomorrow, actually, the 11th. And um, um, it's just been a wonderful ride. But I, I got to tell you something. There's been some things that I've kind of fallen into. I have found, <laughs> you know, when you first, how do I say this? I'll just say it and then you guys work it out later, okay? Um, sometimes when you come in, you like, I have all these ideas, I'm ready to go, and I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do that, and I got my, you know, 10 year plan, I got my five year plan, I got my blah, 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 and God's like, <laughs> just funny, right? I mean, he's kind of like, yeah, got it, okay, good, great, good, good. Can I see the PowerPoint again? <laughs> you know what I mean, right? You know, God's kind of like, oh, I like it, good job. So there were so many times that I didn't know that we were deviating from my plan, right? You know? <laughs> so, so I literally would walk in situations where I'm like, oh, you're here. So I, there's this one story. So um, it's my birthday, January 12th, um, the 12th of January. It's the first month, and then it's like 12 days right after. Yeah. So, I mean, just, I mean... You know, I mean, you don't have to do anything, but the 12th of January. Should I just get, I'm going to get back to my story. So, um, did you guys write that down? Just put it in your phones. The 12th of, I'm sorry. All right. So, anyways, the 12th of January, and we just had church, right? And, um, uh, no, we don't happen to have Sunday night church. Um, so, we have just our Sunday morning. That's our main church. And then we have something on Wednesday. And then we do other stuff and stuff. But anyway, so it we went to Buffalo Wild Wings because why wouldn't you on your birthday, right? Yeah? Okay. All right. No Buffalo Wild Wings people here. All right. Anyway, so we went there and, and so I'm still, it's like four o'clock, okay? Because Pentecostals know how to eat. Come on. Can I get an amen? Yeah? 
So um, I'm still in my suit and everything, and I get this call from my neighbor. And he's like, hey, yo, I have a meeting with all my Boy Scout peeps, and I'd like you to come, introduce yourself, and that. And I'm like, um, it's four o'clock. No, I, no, that was when the call came. It was like five or 5.30, and he wanted me there by six. Now listen, he didn't call my secretary. She doesn't really do much for me in that area anyway. But right, so I wasn't prepared. I'm like, I'm still in my suit. It's my birthday. Maybe this is one of those moments that as a, you know, I need to create boundaries and, you know, spend time with my family on January 12th, which is my birthday. And, uh, you know, I'm like, all right, okay, whatever. You know, fine, sure. Yeah. So I call him and I say, hey, got your message. You want me there in a half an hour? Um, okay, I can do that. But, you know, this is my time to add some boundaries, right? Um, but I literally can only stay for like, you know, five minutes, ten minutes, you know. So he's like, all right, cool. Now, I have no idea where I'm going. I have no idea what this is about. It, literally none, but I'm like, okay, whatever, right? So I come to this bank and uh, where they're meeting at night, and they all have black ski masks, which is weird. And I'm just kidding. That was... <laughs> you guys were getting too into the story. I had to break it up for a second. Okay, so um, I, I show... <laughs> Stop. All right, let me get... Edit that, please. Okay, so... <clears throat> Can I give? I, so I don't know what's going on, but all I do is I see all these huge trucks coming up, Gah, boom, and I'm thinking this could be kids, this could be adults. I have no idea. I walk in the door, and the guy that called me and invited wasn't even there. So I'm literally standing alongside. Hey, you know what I mean? A suit. Everybody's in jeans and, and ball caps and just coming in and everything. I'm like, who's the weird guy? You know, I mean, it's kind of that. And, and I'm like, what in the world's going on? Well, anyway, so I step in and, and then the head guy that's there, he goes, oh, hey, it's good to see you. And he starts talking about something. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not that guy. Whoever he thought was, but he goes, Oh, are you Pastor Rob? I go, yes. He goes, okay, we got you. We know you only have a couple minutes, so we're going to put you right at the front in the agenda. And I'm like, okay. And I, I don't know what I'm supposed to talk about. I don't think you're getting this. Like, I'm sitting there going, what in the world? I don't even have my Bible on me. I have my phone, luckily, and, and we have these apps on Bibles now, so that's good. Hopefully, I could pick a scripture. I, I have no idea what's going on. And so, we're all sitting down. Finally, my friend comes, and he comes and sits down, and he's like talking to everybody else, and I'm like, dude, what? What? Actually, I, I say friend, but he's my neighbor, right? That I've met like twice. All right? And, uh, and so he's, he's not even really talking to me, right? And I'm just like, what in the world is going to... So all of a sudden, the guy goes, okay, uh, Pastor Rob's here. Thank you, Forrest, for, you know, inviting him and everything. Um, you know, um, and I, still, I don't know why I'm here, right? And he's like, uh, you know, maybe you could tell yourself a little bit. And so I'm like, of course, it's Boy Scouts, so maybe they want me to do something. I don't know, or I don't know. Or maybe they're trying to recruit me to be a Boy Scout leader. I don't know. I don't even know how to make all those knots, right? So I'm sitting here, and I'm like, what am I doing? And, and um, we may look like we have it together, but this is what happens in the head, you know. Um, so don't put your pa don't put your pastor through this stuff. This is bad. It adds stress and heart starts palpitating and everything. And all right, so anyway, he goes, "Can you tell us a little bit about yourself?" I'm sure, and I tell him a little bit. And and you know, I was a former youth pastor, so I kind of focus on that since it's a Boy Scout thing. And and they go, "Okay, great. Well, it's good." And and uh, they go, "So would you be willing to preach?" the um, camps that we have. Oh, got, got it. Th thanks, God. I literally walked. Now, for three years after that, I preached two camps every year. 240 kids Woo! per camp. Listen to me. I can't make this stuff up. 
God's way is always going to be better. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. All right, so that, that's just one thing. Here's another thing. I happened to be going to the uh, ministerial association. And I was in the ministerial association. I got to get done with my stories and then we'll get back to really what we're really talking about, okay? So I was in the ministerial association and we all sat down and it was the most boring lunch I've ever been at. In, in fact, they're all ministers, which are supposed to be nice people. They didn't even pray before they ate. I, I'm just like, what? What is this? And, and I'm like, fine, I'll make it through the lunch. And I'm trying to try and talk to people. All of a sudden, we get done with one. And then I get a call from one of the ministers. They're like, oh, I, good to meet you and everything. Hey, how would you like to do something in the community? I'm like, yes, because I'm just coming into the community. Yes, absolutely. So for a year or two years, I was speaking at uh, uh, um, an old person's home. I, is that, that's not the right way to say that. Help me though. I'm, it's, they're going to throw things. They were, it was like 70s, 80s, 90s, and they're like, some were dementia and some were, you know, some different things, right? And so I was able to go in for like two years, almost two years, and begin to preach the gospel every single week consistently. I didn't even know. Do you know what happened to, to uh, uh, a year and a half after that? A year and a half after that, they asked me to be the leader of the ministerial association. Wow. That's, awesome. That's crazy. Yeah. All right? And, and I probably tried to snake it. Or, but what, you know, here's the cool part. I'd be in those meetings, and I'd be like, so what do you guys do when, uh, you know, you feel like the, the sanctuary, you know, the people are, you know, welling up and they really want to have a connection with God. What do you do? And, and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, no, I mean, you know, like we have an altar service or after our worship, we come up and pray and stuff. What do you guys do? And they're like, really? Okay, so now here's, here's something cool. I, I got to get back to my notes. Just cut me off when you're ready. All right, so here's something cool that happened. All right, are you ready? It's going to be so exciting. <laughs> All right, so um, we started having some vision, right? And we started to do some stuff. And, and so our Lutheran pastor, Vernon Lutheran, she says, hey, listen, you know what would be really good is if we all pray together. And I'm like, cool, right? I'm good with, I'm good with prayer. And so uh, we set the date and uh, I showed up at her church and that was it. It was me and this pastor. Luckily, the door was open, help me, and the secretary was there. You get me, right? Okay, so, um, so she's like, well, let's just sit down. And so we just sit down in this room, and, and it's kind of awkward, right? You know, what? I'm sorry, maybe just for me it was awkward. But I'm like, what are we going to do? And so all this, we're just sitting down, and, and uh, she goes, well, why don't, uh, you know, I pray, and then you pray, and you just, whatever you feel. And I'm like, all right, cool, no problem, you know. So um, she starts, and she's, you know, praying and everything, and saying some things, and I'm like, amen. You know, I'm not trying to interrupt her and everything, and I'm like, okay, cool. And so then she stops, so I go, I guess it's my turn. So I go, and I just begin to pray for the community, that kind of thing. I know, I, you're right now. I get it. No, I get it. But hold on. So then um, <laughs> here's the thing. Rev. There's this scripture in the Bible. And it says where two or three are gathered together. There he is in the midst. Right? I'm sitting here and, and, and so she's praying and I feel the Holy Spirit. So I begin to speak in tongues. Quietly. Not to mess her up. Right? Right? I didn't stand up and go I don't know right? I, I didn't do that. Because that would be weird. <laughs> so I, I, sat, <laughs> I sat and I, and I just, you know, I'm just speaking in tongues. And, uh, and she ends her prayer. So guess whose turn it is to pray? There's nobody else in the room, people. Keep up. Right? <laughs> so I begin to pray. 
and I, now we're going to end this, okay? We're going back and forth a couple times. We're going to end it. But, you know, I feel the Spirit of God. So as I'm praying, I hear this. I'm like, what in the world is that? I open my eyes. And Sister Molly, Pastor Molly, has her eyeliner is streaming down her face. And she was just speaking in tongues. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. She, after we compose ourselves, right? She looks at me. She goes, thank you, Pastor Rob, for allowing that gift to flow. She says, I have not experienced that in decades. She's, you know, a 60s-ish. She goes, I have not experienced that in decades. That, now, now, here's the funny part. So, <laughs> so now she talks to me all the time about these moments. And she's like, yeah, I was in, you know, we met with the Lutheran people in, in our in our." whatever meetings that they have and she said the Lutheran guy you know the head um, and I'm sorry I don't have the terminology said uh, I uh, we, you know we're hearing about this tongues and everything and she said you know what I did I just I just leaned over to the friends next to me I said I'm a tongue talker <laughs> she's telling me this and I'm like Okay, good. So, so, so I mean, it was just, that was just it. All right, and I'm going to share one more and that's it. I promise. And that'll be it. And then we're going to, and then I'll end. I will. Um, oh my goodness. I'm going so long. All right. So here it is. I, pro- I promise. I'll, I'll stop. Okay. So here's the last thing. Uh, uh, last thing that I, I kind of show up and got here. So I'm having a meeting with those ministerial association. I have a, a pastor from First Congregational Church. They believe in infant baptism, um, Trinitarian, uh, you know, along those lines. All right. This guy's a great guy. I'm actually, we're great friends and, and everything. Well, anyway, he comes up and uh, he walks in. He walks in a little early and he walks over and he says, hey, listen, uh, tell me what you do when you baptize. I'm like, um, okay, let me tell you what we do, <laughs> right? And so, so I take him over to our, our baptistry and I, you know, open it up and I go, okay, so here's what I do. And I'm, I'm making it like so cool, so chill, right? I'm chill about this. I'm like, so when they get there in the water, I have them go like this and I tell them about, you know, they're, you know, holding their nose when they go under, when I say their name and by the profession of your faith. And I kind of go that. I go, but before I do that, I ask them, two questions. I said, the first question is, what are we doing here? And this is what I'm expecting them to say. Well, I'm, I'm here to get my sins washed away, like Acts 22, 16, or Acts 2, 38, right? <laughs> and and, and this, is, this is part of the family, and this is the severing of, of the, the, the sins are washed away, and, and I want to hear them, you know, kind of talk about how their sins will be forgiven, and it'll be as far as from the east as from the west, right? You get what I'm saying, right? I'm ministering right here. I'm like, and this is what else? You know, I'm kind of giving like the purpose of it all. And, uh, and, and I go, and then the second one is, do I do it in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost or in the name of Jesus? Well, I do it in the name of Jesus, of course, because he died on the cross. I said, well, thank you for letting me know. I, I you know, I'm, I'm going to be talking about baptism this summer, and um, I want to, I want to talk about believers' baptism. I'm like believers' baptism. Uh, oh, that's what we do, <laughs> right? So I'm like, okay, cool. All right. So summer comes up, and here's what happens. He takes, um, I think he said seven, seven people down to the river. And he baptized seven of his members in the name of Jesus Christ. One of the ladies, when he was speaking about this, I've got to end so quick. And I'm not even, one of the ladies that he was speaking, he spoke the first week on infant baptism and the second week on, um, on believer's baptism. By the way, uh, there's no place in the Bible where it talks about infant baptism, right? Okay. Yep, we're good. So, um, 
after he spoke the second week, um, one person in his congregation came up to me. She says, uh, so I know which one you believe in. And he's like, which one? Believer's baptism. Because you're so much more passionate about that. Now listen. My friend has not gotten baptized in the name of Jesus yet. All right? He's still wrestling with that. But I got to tell you, oh, all right, this is it. This is my last story, and I'm, I promise. Okay, so here's something else that happened. So I went to his office, and I'm like, okay, hey, bro, how's everything going? We're talking about chaplain stuff and that kind of thing. And uh, I said, um, so, you know, have you given any more thought? This is a year later after the baptismal thing, because I'd also talked about the Holy Ghost. I said, have you given any more thought about the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues? He's like, no, hmm. I haven't. He goes, have you? I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, do you do it? I go, yeah. I, I just did this morning. I was praying for you. I spoke in tongues. He's like, oh. And so he's like, okay, cool, you know, and he's like, all right, yeah, and we had to end. And I go, well, just think about it, you know, talk to God, say this crazy pastor's talking about this, that kind of thing. He's like, all right, cool, good, we'll see you later. So he calls me like a week later, and he says, hey, listen, can we get together and continue our conversation? I'm like, yeah, right? <laughs> no problem, right? And uh, and uh, so then he calls me again. He's like, you didn't give me a date. When are we doing that? And I'm like, oh, dude, and it's Wednesday and, and you know, Thursday. I said, oh, why don't we just meet tomorrow morning in my thing, in my office. That'd be great. He's like, cool, no problem. So I get up early on Thursday morning and, um, you know, I went to my office and I opened up, you know, all the books on the Holy Spirit because I got to be ready. Yeah. I need to have an answer. Uh -huh. I need to know what the word of God says about this. Kind of anticipate his questions and everything. And I'm ready. So he walks in and I'm like, bam, here we go. I'm ready. I don't even need a cheat. I got it. I know where I'm going, right? And, um, and so he sits and he, we're talking a little bit and just talking about family and everything and everything. I'm like, come on, let's go. I'm ready. I got these scriptures burning inside my heart. Let's go. I can't wait to tell you. Let's go. And so he goes, okay, so here's the question I have. I go, hit me. He says, um, how do I get my wife to get the Holy Ghost? Because I got it two weeks ago. <laughs> what? I did all that studying for nothing? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, is that God... God is good. Amen. And sometimes we get into these situations where, where we are uncomfortable, right? We get into these situations and we think that we're the tail. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that we are the head, not the tail. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that we are the head, not the tail. And that's what we need to be doing. We, we need to walk in and understand that we are the arm of God. We're building kingdoms. Now, if I can actually get back to my notes, and I'm just going to try and finish this up. Um, I need to remind us. Actually, we're good. Let's stand. Listen to me, church. Listen to me. Listen to me. Your peacemaking... When you go to your job and they try and bait you into a, a, a discussion or, or contention, when you go to your school, when you go to, to any place that you are, you got to listen to me. When we make peace, I'm not saying that we're running away from conflict. That's not what I'm saying, okay? When there's conflict, I always look at it, there's an opportunity for a resolution, right? So I'm always pushing for the resolution. But, but when we're in those situations, we need to speak. The church needs to speak about peace. Amen. We need to speak about the characteristics of the kingdom. Amen. Because we're kingdom builders. Right. And I want you to know, through my blundering, presenting my 10 point plan to Jesus, and God had his own idea, right? God is going to lead you. We're living in a weird time right now. And 
listen, the time is that the church has got to rise up. We are family, but we are part of a kingdom. Now let me tell you something else about the kingdom. That means that there's a king. And that king, Jesus Christ, that king has ideas of how his people need to present themselves. And that's what the Sermon on the Mount was about. It was about reorienting people to truth. So I wonder if every eye closed in this place, if, you, if we can just enter for a moment. I wonder if there is, um, I wonder if there is somebody in here that maybe is a part of a situation. That, that you know you need God to intervene. And, and, I, and I wonder if you're looking for the answer. Or, or maybe there's, there's some dissension that happens to be going on. Or some, some, some things that there needs to be some healing. I'm asking you to invoke the precious Father. Our God, our Savior. Invoke the name of Jesus Christ over every path that I take. Every room that I step into. Every heart that I come in contact with. That today God can change their lives. I'm going to pray over you. And, and I wonder if, if possibly it might be appropriate that we talk to the Lord this morning. And that we open up this altar. But let me pray first. So please don't come yet. But let me just pray. Precious Father. I pray for your church, God. I pray.